Hello, and welcome to our video about the timeline over which the going concern assessment is made. My name is Edu Kienhuis, and I'm an IAASB board member and the chair of the going concern task force. You may have seen our video about key changes for going concern, and if not, I would highly recommend it. Also, look out for our video about the increased transparency in the auditor's report about going concern. This video is presented by Josephine Jackson and also very worthwhile. Okay, as said before, this video deals with the timeline over which the going concern assessment is made. So what do we mean with this timeline? This timeline is the period that is covered by management going concern assessment as to whether the use of the going concern basis of accounting is appropriate and whether a material uncertainty exists related to events or conditions that may cause significant doubt on the entity's ability to continue as a going concern. Financial reporting frameworks typically indicate a minimum period that the entity needs to take into account. For example, IES 1 requires management to look out at least 12 months from the end of the reporting period. Management assessment is a key part of the auditor's evaluation to conclude on the appropriateness of the going concern basis of accounting and whether a material uncertainty exists. And as such, this timeline is a very important piece of our proposed going concern standards. So, what are the changes that are being proposed to the period to be covered by management going concern assessment? Let me first cover what is not changing. We are not proposing to change the period that needs to be covered. This remains at at least 12 months. However, we are proposing a change to the commencement date of the period of management assessment. So rather than the period starting at the reporting date, which typically is the year end date, we are proposing to start the period for this assessment at the date of approval of the financial statements. To this end, the proposed going concern standard requires that the auditor shall request management to extend its assessment period to at least 12 months from the date of approval of the financial statements. In the case, of course, that management hasn't prepared an assessment that covers that period. We have chosen this date rather than the date of the auditor's report or the date of the financial statement issuance because in most jurisdictions, this date is a widely recognized date that may be prescribed in statutory requirements for management, those charged with governance, or those with recognized authority assert that they have taken responsibility for the financial statements. By making this change in a commencement date, management going concern assessment will be more forward-looking compared with what was required under the current going concern standard. We fully appreciate but also fully intend it to be quite a bit of change compared to uh, the, existence, the existing practice. So why are we proposing to change the commencement date of the period of management going concern assessment? Firstly, this will drive greater comparability and consistency globally. Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom and the United States have amended their national equivalent going concern standards to require commencement date of the 12 month period of management assessment to be the date the financial statements are issued or approved or when the auditor's report is signed, which are more or less comparable. Secondly, certain firms or national practices have evolved to already use a comparable commencement date even if not required by the current going concern standard. So our proposed change in the commencement date creates further alignment and consistency. Thirdly, change in the commencement date reinforces the benefit to users of the financial statements, as these will be based on more current information in management's assessment compared to the current going concern standard. Additionally, the change also brings further consistency and clarity um, as to the period that is covered by the conclusion of the auditor in respect of going concern. Now that I've explained why we made the proposed changes, you may ask yourself if the IAASB remained within its boundaries and if the proposed going concern standard remains aligned with the requirements of financial reporting frameworks. The short answer is yes. We considered various recognized financial reporting frameworks and concluded that our proposed commencement date of the 12 months period of management assessment of going concern 
would not be inconsistent with the requirements of recognized financial reporting frameworks. What we have noted is that such frameworks establish a minimum, at least, but not limited to, 12-month period, not a cap. It is emphasizing that the outlook is not limited to 12 months, and that's consistently been found. For example, in the IFRS accounting standards, the requirements of IES 1, as well as the educational material issued by the IFRS Foundation in respect of going concern, um, in January 2021, it's clear that the 12 months period is a minimum period and not a cap. I also want to note that in the application material to our proposed going concern standard, we specifically acknowledge that the recognized financial reporting frameworks specify a minimum period for which management is required to take into account all available information, as this would acknowledge that a longer time frame than a minimum period can be considered. As mentioned above, we appreciate this may be quite a change compared to the existing practice as auditors will now, for all practical purposes and intent, will be requesting management for a going concern assessment that covers a, a period um, uh, of at least 12 months from the date of approval of the financial statements rather than from the reporting date. So, what are the implications if management provides an assessment that does not cover this period? For example, when management management's assessment only covers the 12 months period from the year end reporting date. The proposed standard will require the auditor to ask management to extend its assessment. We appreciate that maybe initially this could lead to some tension and that in certain circumstances, management would be unwilling to extend their assessment. Consequently, we've proposed some flexibility in our proposed standards. So, in the case that management would be unwilling to extend their assessment, the auditor is required to discuss this with management and, where applicable, those charged with governance. This discussion may provide additional information to support the appropriateness of management use of the going concern basis of accounting in their preparation of the financial statements. Example may be that in the case when the entity has profitable operations, no liquidity concerns, management or those charged with governance provide additional information about this and about the absence of any other events or conditions that may cause significant doubt for the period of at least 12 months after the approval of the financial statements. However, when the auditor concludes that the additional information is sufficient um, to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to support management use of the going concern basis of accounting, this would be considered a matter of significant professional judgment and consequently that needs to be documented in accordance with ISA 230. But there may also be instances where, based among, among others, the application of professional skepticism, the auditor concludes that the additional information is not sufficient for the auditor to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to support the appropriateness of management use of the going concern basis of accounting. When this is the case, the auditor should evaluate whether the assessment of the risks of material misstatements is still appropriate and modify planned audit procedures. For example, if management decision is unreasonable in the circumstances, this may indicate a fraud risk factor that may or no, that would require evaluation in accordance with ISA 240. The auditor should also evaluate whether management's unwillingness to make or extend its assessment is a limitation on the, um, on the audit evidence the auditor has obtained. And this would lead to a modified opinion, often a disclaimer given the pervasiveness of going concern issues on the financial statements. So there's a little bit of flexibility but it does require a fair bit of professional judgment and professional skepticism. This brings us to the end of this video on the timeline over which the going concern assessment is made. I've explained our proposed changes to the commencement date, why we made these, and that these are aligned with the recognized financial reporting frameworks. And I covered the implications if management is unwilling to extend this assessment. So what do you think? 
We would love to hear from you. Please share your views on this or any other matters as proposed in our going concern exposure draft. You have until the 24th of August 2023 to submit your comment letter. And if you need any further information, please visit our website at the indicated address or link. We very much look forward to hearing from you. Many thanks for your attention. <laughs>